First off, congratulations on making it to the finals, Coach. Uh, what kind of challenges do you see Real Grand Valley presenting? Well, I mean, they're a team that uh, uh, Wiltshire, a kid, can really shoot the ball. A Canadian kid that um, with size that hangs out on the perimeter, so you're used to having playing him with a bigger guy, and guys are normally used to kind of falling back to the paint, but he's the one that we got to account for out on the perimeter. But um, the team that has some speed, uh, like to get up and up and down the floor, utilize the three. So you know, we got our work cut out for us, but at the same time, we feel like we, you know, pose a problem for them with our ball movement and the way that we defend and do things. I mean, I guess they say it's the number one offensive rated team against the number one defensive rated team. So some gonna have to give. What's your message to the team going into the first game? Well, I mean, just you know, we got you know, hopefully three or four days left. You know what I'm saying? There shouldn't be any type of, you know, rah rah motivation speech at this point. You know, what I mean, it's not about any, you know, too late in the season to be talking about effort or anything like that. We understand who we are. We understand our identity as a team, offensively and defensively. It's just about going out there and executing. So, um, you know, we're just excited, man. Excited to get to this point. Seems like it's, uh, you know, it's gone so fast. You know, we're here now in the finals. Some a goal that we set. And, and, and did all the little things to put ourselves in position to, to be here. And now it's uh, about um, staying focused and, and, and finishing it off. Other than game one in Canton, you've blown out teams these last three games. Do you expect things to tighten up a bit now in the finals? Well, I mean, I just expect us to be who we are. You know, whatever happens, happens. I mean, we're not a front-running team that, you know, if we you know, get up early, feel like it's, you know, that's what we need to be successful. We're a team that if we get down a few points, we actually got down to this team early. A lot of it was to do with our uh, you know, lack of shot making at that time. Our defense was still pretty good, but we continued to work the game and do the things for 48 minutes. And we like to see what the result is after 48 minutes and not um, you know, play too much into a quarter or a half. But you know, we are who we are and, and capable, capable of being and, and focused. Um, you know, we, we'll see. Everyone's kind of goal in the D League is to make that eventual step up to the NBA. Do you feel like, you know, this run you've been on and making to the finals, that just gives everyone a bigger platform, more exposure, and maybe improves their odds of making it to the NBA? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's what we talked about, you know, that it, you know, how we wanted to go approach this thing and everybody being involved and everybody working. Um, you know, it's not the typical D League format. You know, it's all about guys trying to get maximum minutes and put up maximum numbers to be able to catch, you know, uh, a general manager's or a team's attention. You know, we, we take the philosophy, let's win, you know, and put ourselves in, in a position to be one of the teams that stand the last, then everybody's watching. You know, and I think that that's what they, they, they believe that they bought into that, and we've seen. The success from it, you know, with Eddie getting called up to Cleveland at the end of, you know, a couple weeks ago or a week ago, and um, Axel the same thing, you know. And, but if we were just predicated on them guys getting all of the touches or, or getting all of the minutes, then we wouldn't be able to fill in the way we've had so far. So we feel that, um, you know, our, our method and approach is going to be, you know, it might not happen for every one of these guys this year, but every, but the fact that they can walk away from the D League team that they're a winner, you know, they're a champion. Um, teams won't play us like that on their teams, and then and they'll start to look a little bit deeper and see the roles that some of these guys filled for us, and hopefully that'll help them, you know, get some opportunities with some league teams this, this summer, or, you know, create an opportunity for them to go over to, to Europe you know, and maximize the money. I mean, obviously the D League thing is going to change. I think the D League that we see now and the D League that we'll see in five years from now will be will be a lot different. I think uh, with the, um, the two-way contracts and different things that are happening right now, you're going to uh, the talent is going to grow, but I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for our guys. The fact that they've shown that they can win, that, and, um, that there's going to be some opportunities for them this summer. Anyone who's watched this team over the course of the year knows that you guys really play like a team. Great ball movement, great defense. Uh, how satisfying is it for you kind of being the coach and watching this collection of guys where a lot of times, if you just look on paper, they might not have as much talent as the other team, but frequently outplay your opponents? Yeah, you always got to watch that paper. That paper. I mean, we, we got some talented guys. I think you know that names might not pop out as some of the other guys that have had a little bit of in, you know NBA experience. Where we, I don't think we had anybody on the top 25 of quote unquote players to watch in the D League. But we got two call ups. You know, a lot of those guys in that t top 25 didn't get those call ups, and I think it was a factor of the, the the development piece of it that we had. The coaches have done a you know, great job of you know working these guys daily. 
Um, putting, you know, they put in that sweat, that sweat equity, and that's why they're the confident group that you see right now because they've done it. The way we share the ball, they enjoy the way we play, they enjoy knowing that if they can give the ball up and knowing that they're going to get it back and, and, and things like that. And it's a, it's a fun way to play, and you see them all over running and jumping all over the place on the defensive end, and, and, and they like that too. I mean, you know, a, a guy like Brady Hessler, who, um, you know, it's mostly been off the ball. You know, we, we're giving him the ball this year. He's, you know, grown leaps and bounds as a point guard. You know, in my mind, he's the best shooter in the world. You know, NBA or any league. That's 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 who I feel he is. But he's done so more to, to enhance himself, even on the defensive end. Um, I think that's where the growth. We look at film now and see some of the things he's doing defensively, and it's like, you know, you know, it's laughable because he was nowhere near or even thought about those things. But once he knew what to do. He brings those to the game every day, and we have a number of guys that we can say that about. Yeah, just keeping on with that idea, I think you saw a similar thing in Yannick Marrera's offensive game. It's really grown leaps and bounds since yeah. the beginning of the season. Is that satisfying is to see these guys take those steps forward? Absolutely. I mean, it should be uh, uh, John Cabasio, uh, Donnie Tindall, uh, Nate Mitchell, you know, I mean, uh, DG, Nikki. I mean, they work with all these guys, but John and and Donnie in particular with the bigs every day working with Yannick, you know, and you saw the improvement in him and when finishing around the rim and doing it now he has the confidence. I mean, he almost got a, you know, he was missing, you know, at a, at a clip early on and got a little bit of gunshot. But, you know, we just the work, the reps that he continues to, to, to put in every day. And now he's a guy that we look for on the post to make plays, to, to be a facilitator for us as well. He's become a much better passer out of the post. But, you know, if nothing's there, nobody's to pass to, then go to work. And he's done, been doing a really, really good job of that.